Okay, in this video, I'm going to use the uh, files provided in the ski goggle reflection assignment, uh, namely the uh, PS12 goggles and either the lake, the snow, or the trees from PS11. I'm going to download the, uh, actually, I've already downloaded PS12 goggles, and I'm going to go into Photoshop, go to File and Open, keep everything on the same folder in my desktop. Eventually, I'll probably just uh, move some of this stuff around so it doesn't get too cluttered. I'll select goggles, and for this, I'll probably come back in a little bit and get the lake picture. Opening the goggles, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, going into the view menu and tell it to view and fit on screen. And I actually want to get a little bit closer so that I can see the reflection on the goggles even better. So I'm going to window finding my navigator tool it appears on the right and I'll zoom in making the mounds larger a couple of clicks and I can position where I want to be on the uh, goggles by uh, just clicking and dragging that red rectangle I'll uh, collapse the navigator and take a look at what I see center this a little bit better what I want to do is I want to use a selection tool to uh, select the uh, edge of the goggles I've already got this selected but I'll deselect this you should be able to see the lasso tool the third one from the top hovering on top of the lasso tool you get just that the lasso tool if you click and hold that button you get the polygonal lasso tool which is used in another video in this exercise uh, and uh, then there's the magnetic lasso tool which is what I want to use I'll select the magnetic lasso tool. Now, this is a good picture and everything. Uh, however, the subject is different from what I intended to have. It's got a photographer in the middle there, and maybe that works for the picture, but I'd rather see something else. I'd rather see either the lake or some snow or something else on the reflection. And I can replace it uh, simply enough using Photoshop, but first I need to make that selection. With the magnetic lasso tool, unlike the regular lasso tool, I'll go back to it shortly here. I'll click and drag and hold and select lasso tool. I would actually have to click, hold the mouse button and drag all the way around and then just be really sure that I'm doing the right thing because if I go out of the way, I, there's really no way for me to go back without starting over. If I let go of the mouse button, then I get this really bad selection and that just means you have to do it all over again. Whenever you uh, make a selection of any sort and uh, you don't want to keep it, go to the Select menu and select, or rather click Deselect. Control D is your shortcut. Command D on your Mac. Going back to the magnetic lasso tool, unlike the lasso tool which just lays down and uh, uh, it starts selecting as you travel, this one will actually go a little bit uh, slower. I'm going to first click somewhere and near this corner. I'm not necessarily doing anything yet. I'm just sort of hovering because if I start to move the mouse, then it's going to start with those magnetic powers uh, sticking to the side of the uh, goggles. And if I'm not careful, then I'll get a I'll make a mess like this right here. Uh, it's simple enough to correct. However, unlike the lasso tool, if I start to uh, click on the backspace key on my PC. It's also the delete key on the Mac. Step by step by step, I'm pressing backspace and it's deleting each anchor one by one. All the way to the beginning and then now it's gone. So I can start again. But uh, rather than just starting uh, with no plan, I'm going to first check out my width. That's going to be the uh, selection tool, what it's going to be uh, looking at. It's uh, whenever you click, it only clicks and selects one single pixel. It's going to look 10 pixels all the way around to make sure that it finds some sort of an edge, a change in contrast, which you can tell it to uh, be more or less aware of it. Uh, yours might have the contrast at 10%. I lowered this to 5% just because although there's high contrast on this side, there's some areas where it just kind of blends from dark color to dark color. Um, the frequency, it's how many, how often it's going to be laying down anchors. I'm going to increase these actually to something like 75. And uh, 
Also, as I work, I'm going to press the caps lock key. When I press the caps lock key, the uh, appearance of the tool changes. It goes from the magnetic lasso tool. You can see the lasso with the magnet. And uh, I click caps lock, and now I see something a little bit more similar to other tools, which is that cursor right in the middle with the area that it's going to be looking at, those 10 pixels we were talking about. So now I'll find that corner again and click and very carefully just well I mean you do have to be somewhat careful but just slowly I'm going to start to uh, navigate around the edge occasionally clicking on the mouse button that lays down a magnetic lasso tool or rather a magnetic lasso pointer um, those little anchors I'm gonna correct that by pressing backspace a little bit to go back until I can see that I'm sort of free floating again and just take it a little bit more easy here. Shorter jumps between clicks and I'm just gonna see how it starts to behave as I move around. Just like uh, the other assignment that we did previous to this one we'll be able to come back and make some corrections to the selection. There's also a refined edge option but first we need to go through the whole jumping of hoops to go all the way around. Here there's better contrast so the uh, selection tool is working a lot better. I'll get to the edge, make sure that I turn the corner. Keep on clicking but I'll, I'll go back a little bit here. I am keeping basically one of my fingers on the backspace, backspace key so that I can correct my mistakes as soon as they happen or shortly thereafter so that I don't have to go back too far. I'm going to keep on clicking around the nose. There are other tools to get selections like this, but definitely I want you to see the value of the magnetic lasso tool. Okay, here the uh, contrast is growing exponentially, so I expect this is going to be a little bit easier for Photoshop to figure out. And I don't have to click as often. Actually, I'm just not even clicking. I'm going all the way back until I get to the origin point. My tool changes back to the magnetic lasso. I'll click once and then my selection is made. And it's a little bit jagged but uh, that's why we are going to click on the refine edge option just like we did with the previous image. Be it the uh, cowboy or the uh, lady with the cat. Going to... Uh, I don't think that we have to change the view. I'm just going to have the marching ants or something else. Well, here we see just how jagged it is. I'll keep that one open then. I'm going to uh, click on Smart Radius, increase my radius. I'm going to use this uh, smooth, uh, smooth tool in the Adjust Edge just so that it makes it a little bit softer. I'll feather it a little bit so once again it's just a little soft. I don't know that we necessarily need to change the contrast at all. Shift Edge would only make the selection either larger or smaller. Since I can't see it, I'll go back to just the marching ants and see what my selection is doing so far. Maybe I can center this a, bit, a little bit better. And uh, I think that this is a pretty good selection. So I'm going to also tell it to decontaminate the colors and I'll click to output not so much to a new layer but rather to a new layer with a layer mask and then it's set. Now I have this uh, air, uh, this area that was selected and it's uh, separated from the uh, rest of the image. I'll click on the eye in the bottom layer to bring it back. The uh, selection that's going to be brought in or rather the image that's going to be brought in, it's going to be put into this selection. I'll click on File and Open. I think I'm going to use the lake. 
selected the lake, click open, and here it is. I'm going to want to make a selection that covers all of this picture. Simple enough, go to select, tell it to select all. Control A is your shortcut, Command A on a Mac. And then I'm going to copy, edit, copy. If you're going to learn shortcuts, be sure that you know that Control C is copy, Control X is cut, and Control V is paste. These are essential and they are universal among many, many applications. These are the same uh, cut, paste commands that you use in Word. So I copied and uh, clicking on the tab, since I opened this one while I had the other one open, I'll click on the tab that belongs to goggles and then it tells me that I'm in the background copy. And now that it's copied, I'm going to uh, get the selection active again. I'm back in the uh, goggles, so it doesn't matter currently if uh, my background copy is visible or not, since background is very important. We need to see most of this image. I'm going to right click on the layer mask thumbnail and uh, tell it to um, add a mask, add the mask rather, to a selection. So the mask that exists here, it's the shape of the goggles. Uh, it's made a new selection and it's floating and it's on top of the background. I'm going to click on the background layer to make it active. You can tell it's active because it changes color. And since I've copied that other background, I'm going to click on edit and tell it to paste, but not just paste because that would just basically just put the whole picture on top. I'm going to select paste special and tell it to paste into and it'll paste into the selection. So now here's the uh, the lake. If I click on the uh, layer on the left side on the thumbnail, uh, then I can use my move tool, the very top tool on the toolbar to move this around. So maybe I want, I want the uh, picture uh, to show the mountains being sort of straightforward and the lake and uh, then since this I'm going to zoom out I'm going to go to view and uh, zoom out or tell it to fit on screen so I can see the whole thing this is a very sharp uh, or very stark rather uh, reflection to be looking at in, in some goggles it's also a little bit square there so I'm going to move it a little bit more to the top it's not like this person is wearing uh, mirror glasses. Uh, there's supposed to be some sort of reflection as opposed to just you know showing me the picture all over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity of this layer so that I can see whatever is behind it. Uh, not necessarily see the photographer that was there originally. So I'm going to decrease the opacity a little bit until it looks more like this is something that might be reflected on some glasses. So now I see a little bit of the um, of the mountains. I see a little bit of the uh, lens itself, the reflections of the light. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more with my uh, navigation tool, my navigator. And there I can see a little bit of the photographer but it's gone this looks more like a selection I'm going to click on the layer one mask that's the one that's holding the image so to ask to make it active I know that it's active because the four corners are now uh, have that line around them I'm going to right click on that layer and tell it to refine the mask so just like we've been refining the other images this one uh, maybe you're thinking that it's a little bit too smooth or maybe not smooth enough so if I click on Smart Radius, I'm going to make it larger so that it starts to sort of uh, feather it and make it a little bit smoother. I'm increasing the values on those two. I'm going to click OK and just see how that's looking. So now it's a little bit more blended in. I can go back and click on the thumbnail just to make sure that the opacity is working OK. So I'm going to zoom out by clicking view and fitting it on the screen. That's control zero. So now we have a new image with the uh, mounts on the uh, reflection of the goggles as opposed to the uh, photographer. The photographer is always there. We can always just turn off. We can just turn off the visibility and there's the original picture. I'll put it back and uh, now we have 
uh, a new image made from two. When you turn in this um, particular exercise, be sure to go to File and Save As as a Photoshop document, that PSD, and turn this one in so that then I can see your work on the uh, layers in the right column.